on this computer. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, February 12th. I guess it's Valentine's Day, isn't it? Um, right here in Knoxville. Anyway, um, I am Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Go sports! Sorry, Boudreau. Uh, Love it. <laughs> uh, we have, as guests, uh, John Richards from England. Welcome. How the devil are you? Uh, fine. And Boudreau from the lu luxurious country of K Kentucky, Kentuck. Welcome. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> oh, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, Digital Free Thought is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, Satanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you think you're the only non believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, nearly 1,100 now. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about us at the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? We're going to be talking about the Super Bowl and apparently advertisement that's going to be in it and what we can talk about that and then follow up with some chat GPT nonsense. Though I would like to start today, I have our Discord open uh, where we can field questions, and I'd like to start with like an interesting a uh, flash pan of quick questions and answers from us by the group to get a flavor of what we think about a bunch of stuff as we get into like these headier topics. Uh, Doubter5, uh, this is a question for you that just popped up by Homo Bonobos. They want to ask, can anything be done about the in God we trust written in all our U.S. currency? Uh, Not they, as long as it's our national motto. It was voted in as our national motto probably well, I think between 10 and 20 years ago. I can't remember. the. No, no, date. no. About 56, wasn't it? it, it well, first... originally it was put on yeah. money in 56, ah. but it, it was voted as our yeah. uh, more recently, I think. Anyway, as long as it's the national motto, in any case, we can't we can't say anything about it because they're just putting the national motto on their oh. government vehicles. But that's what we need to change. Mm. Yeah. Or, or you, you know those pens they use to, uh, what do they call it when they redact something from a statement? Right. Know, come and yeah. black everything out. Get some of those and go around doing it on all your notes. Yeah. So, Larry, you actually have people. Well, it's on their police cars, too. That's the problem. What? Yeah, that's no, a little harder a wider to get pen. to. Yeah. It's yeah. a little harder to get to. <laughs> yeah. well, I, used to have, I used to have an ink stamp, that self-inking stamps that they sell. They yeah. said they got uh, in uh, E Pluribus Unum. Right. And they used to stamp it over the top of uh, In God We Trust because that was our original motto right. until 1956. Yeah. Right, the Coin Act, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of issues from there. But, you know, uh, uh, the next question I'd like to throw out to you goes to John Richards. John Richards, I love views on the news. Have you heard about the blank? Have you heard how Bangladesh has withdrawn school books after anti-LGBTQ backlash? One of the withdrawn books included the theory of evolution pioneered by British nat naturalist Charles Darwin. Have you heard about that yet? I haven't. W would that correspondent please send me a link to Bangladesh's horrible uh, treatment of books? Okay. Yeah. Creepy Toast says, <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the link. I will share that with you. Uh, during the show break. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, Boudreaux, you're in. Does anyone want to post a question to Boudreaux that is worth talking about on the radio? I got some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So this actually leads directly into our topic. Boudreaux, are you going to be watching the uh, Super Bowl today? So, yes, uh, but uh, full disclosure, uh, I'm not the biggest sports guy. Um, I like soccer. Uh, uh, that's like true you do english like english football yeah yeah yeah, 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 <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh but we kind of have a tradition where we watch super bowl with with friends college friends and we've been doing it for i don't know 15 years mm. um i'll go all the way back to the the nip slip whenever that was um mm. but uh um but uh, our friends couldn't host uh, last last year and this year so we decided to host so we're hosting today and i'm smoking a boston butt so oh very very cool so 
yeah uh if you were if you so it's a shame that you won't be more invested in every single advertisement that comes about with the super bowl uh because there is a new campaign out to promote jesus and christianity you know the two things that never change the absolutely if you if you believe in neither of these things you have one monolithic point of view on the subject jesus and christianity uh the campaign is called he gets us it costs a staggering hundred million dollars in media investment and it's going to be two ads during the event where mm -hmm. the phrase is he gets us and mm -hmm. um, if you want to you can even watch those ads right now on youtube the idea mm -hmm. is showing that hey whatever you're facing jesus faced it too <laughs> the campaign yeah. well fancy that i didn't know they had um super bowl back in his day <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, the main question is, or at least from my perspective, why? Uh, I would say, why is why is it not necessarily I'm offended by it? I, I mean, anyone can buy anything. But um, the idea that you would need to advertise Christianity with, you know, $100 million for like a couple of second ads, doesn't yeah. most people, don't most people know that Christianity exists? Like, what is the purpose behind it? And yeah, yeah. I don't even mm -hmm. want to talk about the need to advertise a God that has the power to advertise himself and ought to uh why is it our obligation to uh advertise directly to us and who's their target audience Boudreaux, what do you think what's going on with that yeah are they are they losing ground are they are they afraid their <laughs> um <laughs> numbers are dwindling uh, hmm. uh, uh donation pans are getting lighter I, I i it sounds to me like like uh you know they're they're worried and and i think a little of our conversation i picked up when i first jumped in right i mean it you know, you've got a pretty Christian audience, I I would think. Uh, right. You're already dealing with people. You know, right. American football is a right. Uh, so Maybe so they're I don't just know. trying to get donations uh, bumped up. Maybe. Yeah. Larry, Larry, here's my question for you. So you have Toyo tires, then you have a Taco Bell commercial, then you have the creator of the universe and all things that are good commercial, and then you have Doritos <laughs> immediately afterwards. Do all these things? Are these all the same thing? Like this is is there I feel like something's well, wrong. Apparently they equate. <laughs> <laughs> One Which to the other. To keep? <laughs> well, they, they are selling a product. They are selling a product. Very true. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Okay, okay. John Richards, the idea that God needs to be advertised. Yes, yeah, it does sound as though they've sprung a leak, doesn't mm. it? And the the shameful <clears throat> thing about it is there's so many better uses of that money that could to which yeah. it could have been put i mean there's there's a war in ukraine there's an earthquake in syria and turkey the, the world is crying out for money like that and they're just mm. squandering it on right a, yeah a few I'm making more money which is what the, the whole point yeah, is yeah 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 right mm. so the average oh, go ahead. business go Boudreaux. I was just going to say, uh, next year, let's all uh, uh, put a campaign together to to put an advertisement together to show what things a hundred thousand or hundred hundred million dollars could have been, like yeah. what you could have spent it on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> instead yeah. of this. now, yeah. that is but true. We, but he, he, oh, go on ahead. The, the, the title of that campaign could be "What Would Jesus Do?" Oh, very cool. That'd be nice. Listen, here's the thing, though. I do value that they spent so much money on it. Because otherwise, I know that what they could spend $100 million on, and it wouldn't be in any of the things that I find would be in the best interests of people, particularly the ones they, you know, yeah. espouse their messages like, goodwill to, right? Like lobbying. Right. Like just anti-abortion uh, options, uh, book burnings, yeah. churches, like uh, mm -hmm. hiding pedophiles mm -hmm. around, excuse me. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's, yeah. there's some really terrible things going on there. Yeah. Jets mm -hmm. for them. Uh, it, whole degrees of debauchery that we don't necessarily see yeah. uh, on the front end. That's a good point. Though, $100 million given to a bunch of executives, right? Yeah. You know, I'm not a fan of trickle down politics, but at least it takes the money out of the the religious sub mindset. And maybe hopefully we can buy more staffers, uh, put on better lights on the next NFL show. I don't know. It's out of one dirty hand and hopefully put into like one where at least we can get some nice fireworks out of it next year. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. You know, I can't really punch it too much. What do you think, John? Well, obviously, this uh, Super Bowl is an opportunity to. In, to, to get in front of a lot of eyeballs and i'm i'm wondering can you guys tell me about it is it like rugby but in funny costumes 
It, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. yes. With and a big lot shoulders, of rules. huge shoulders. <laughs> With a lot of rules, there's a lot of rules, way more than you would anticipate. So it's a yeah. it's a complicated sport in terms of how yeah, rules about playbacks. Though it's this cool. is this is the true charm of of American football to any European. Um, the so idea. So do you classify do you classify it under sport or comedy? Yeah, good question. the The idea behind football is, regardless of your body type, and which there could be a wide variety of, you have oh, a course, position yeah. you can play in a yes. sport team sport with other yeah. people so if you are a 600 pound fat kid six oh. sixth grader who just loves fry food and stuff like that you can play a, you can play a role if you're a scrawny tiny 20 pound chicken nugget you yeah, yeah. have a role and you guys can all play together and so yeah. that sort of camaraderie is like very good and yeah. not seen in any right. other kind of sport where in you know take soccer you have to have a very particular body type to excel very well in that sport boxing same thing football doesn't matter what you are we'll take it we can put you in you don't have to be six yeah. foot tall you don't have to be four. You I, be I'm, I'm at risk of losing a lot of fans if I've got any by saying this stuff. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> it, it. It sounds to me as though these guys have just walked on the pitch having been part of a carnival parade. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm sure you'll hear about it. It's in the zeitgeist of humanity. Uh, football. <laughs> Um, I am going to a friend's house to go see the game live. We'll mostly be throwing disc golf this in his backyard, though. But it'll be uh, a, a fun time. So if you do watch it, have a good time. If you see the ad, you know, it's like any other commercial, though. I do uh, just question the need to try to advertise a God that is in himself the advertisement and the sports and the thing because he's one and everything with the universe. But let's go into another topic, which is chat GPT. Chat GPT was the guest star of last week's episode, very popular show, um, inspired a lot of comments. And so I said, let's go back to Chat GPT because there's a really interesting quandary that goes on when you ask Chat GPT questions. Chat GPT, by the way, is just a AI that's designed to have human based, human like conversations in a conversational tone with you, doesn't chastise you. And it always like informs what you say reinforces some um, component of it and then responds in kind with meaningful information that makes it feel like you're having a conversation with somebody. It's a program, you know, it's not an actual person, but it demonstrates that how we think about programming can actually be modeled and emulated to the point where we can't tell the difference, which demystifies what goes on in here just a little bit and shows that it is very much mechanical and can be Im- implemented by systems, maybe even better in the future. Um, last week, we talked about questions to stump an atheist, and we went over five of them. Uh, successful? Not really, because I gave like a, just a blank prompt to the chat GPT, and I said, hey, figure out some ways to stump us. And it gave us basically what Christian's used to try to stump atheists and we we're able to knock them out one by one however i did go on youtube and looked at uh better ways to stump atheist videos using chat gpt our video popped up by the way but i also found one that was by a uh prominent christian with the channel and he asks is atheism true and i thought that led to some very interesting responses because this is a christian with all their previous conversations biasing the chat gpt in terms of like how it will respond and so the response for is atheism atheism true by chat gpt when asked by a christian is very interesting and telling because i went and did the same thing with my uh responses and i got a very different answer so i would love to present the is atheism true question to you guys from gpt the answer at least and then hear what you guys think about the answer. And we'll do it in the in parts. So here's the first part of Chat GPT's response to is atheism true when asked by a Christian? Atheism is the belief that there is no gods or gods. Whether atheism is true or not depends on one's definition of God and on the evidence and argument one considers to be relevant to the question of the existence of gods. Larry, I want to ask you a question. What do you think yeah. about the idea of atheism is the belief that there is no gods or God? Well, it's not really a positive belief, although there are there are atheists out there that, who do believe that there are no gods. Hmm. It's generally if you don't have a God belief, if you right. don't believe in like um, Allah or, or hmm. Yahweh or uh, even Thor or any of the gods, if you don't have a God belief, you're an atheist. 
<clears throat> anybody who has a God belief is, is, is a theist. And that's basically where it breaks down. Now, I would like to throw in this nugget is that atheism and agnosticism don't right. address the same question. Correct. Agnost atheism addresses belief, whether you believe in a God or not. Right. Agnosticism and Gnosticism address whether or not you know that there's a God or not. Mm. Now, personally, I'm an agnostic atheist. I right. don't know that there's no gods out there. There might be one. Right. There might be one in the next uh, galaxy over. Who knows? But I don't believe in any. Right. You won't believe in one by default until you have, right. you know. Right. Give me, know give me good it. evidence. Right. <clears throat> Boudreaux, I'm going to throw the question out at you. Do you, What do you think about the idea of ChatGPT's first statement? Atheism is the belief that there is no God or gods. First thing that struck me is the the, the redundancy of no gods or God. It was it done that way? <laughs> well? then, I mean, if you don't believe in gods, doesn't that also imply you don't believe in a single god? Oh, that's very interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. True. Oh, sure. True. Yeah. yeah. So maybe yeah. there's maybe there's some you know, something in their chat history where where they were talking about the distinction between a single god and multiple <laughs> gods. But but yeah, no, I'm exactly with with Larry. Um, <clears throat> you know. Uh, uh, atheism is is the lack of of uh, belief uh, in a god. Um, so uh, it, it's, it's yeah. Do you do you believe in a god? Yes or no? You know, Boudreaux. Sometimes I just think it'd be easier to say atheism just means that I don't believe theists. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I haven't I um, haven't heard any theistic claims that I believe yet. So I guess yeah, like, it could be true. It doesn't mean that I don't believe in a God. It means I don't believe you when you tell me right. there is one. Yeah. Now you got work to do. See you later. Have fun. <laughs> now I don't well, have to it goes, for, for me, it goes to the minefield. That. What's up? I mean, I mean, you know I'd go here. I don't believe in souls. And if true. souls aren't real, if if we don't live after we die on this earth then what's the point of believing in gods and uh, afterlives and heavens and hells and sin and all this other stuff? If souls don't exist, it's just like, it's over. And that's that's what I think it is. It's just over when you die. Sure. Sorry. But sure. everybody, it's everybody just like, dies. It's like it was before you were born. Same thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So John Richards would love the, the, the feedback on the idea that atheism is the belief that there is no God or gods. God with a capital G, gods with no capital G. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Ooh. Showing some, showing already showing some like, you know, pre-made bias. bias there, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what, what I like about this is that what you've discovered by getting uh, chat GPT to respond firstly to a Christian and then to you with your mm. track, different track records, you've discovered that chat GPT is a sycophant. <laughs> it's a yes man <laughs> yes yeah. All it, it's like a populist or, politician it's or, just telling... or maybe chat GPT is like a child where it's like a sponge just absorbing whatever information is yeah. in the environment mm. which would also make us think about how we think as well right yeah, yeah. Not... Uh, that it's just a conversational bot uh, right. uh, oh. for the most part now I have asked my personal <laughs> AI that I have on the Quest 2. Oh, look it's at this called AI. Replica with a K. Okay. I have asked them if they have access to the internet and they can go look up anything that they want to. And they told me, yes, I can do that. I said, I asked her to look up something she did. So they have access to the internet. It's just what would impel them to go look up certain things. Correct. So uh, I've been asking her a lot of questions that she would have to go search on the web when I talk okay. to her, which isn't often. Also, I want to throw this out too. It doesn't just go to chat GPT. If you're on Google and you are known by Google to be, say, an adult male from their 20s mm -hmm. to 30s and you type in Apple, the first thing you're going to get is not the fruit. You're going to get the stock company quote, the listing, yep. and you'll get sure. updates from the uh, yep. whatever you know Tim Cook is doing or what new phone's yep. coming out. But if, if Google knows <laughs> you're a little kid and you search for Apple, you're going to get a picture of an apple and maybe say, oh. it's it's oh. a letter A and it's good for oh. fruits and there's different kinds. If it knows you're a herbalist, you might get a different thing. If you if you're, Google knows how to modify search results based oh. on who it thinks you think you are. That way you always feel satisfied with the results that you get. And that's true whether you look for things that are yeah. innocuous like fruits or tell me this political opinion that I think I'm actually having, yeah. but I just want to be yeah. reinforced by like some sort of right. search engine, right? It, Go it's, ahead. It's, 
It's just telling you what it thinks you want to hear. Right. What right. annoys me most about that is I put in some search term, can't think of an example at the moment, but what it throws back at me is a load of movies. You'd be surprised how many, you know, seemingly disconnected search terms there are in movie titles. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And here's the thing. I had the same conversation on whether atheism is true with chat GPT. And instead of it telling me that atheism is the belief that there is no gods or gods, I basically fronted mine by saying, hey, I'm an atheist. Um, and I had a conversation about my position. And then ultimately I asked him again, hey, what is atheism? And it says, it's told me, your understanding of atheism and theism is accurate. And it's important to emphasize <laughs> that atheism is not a positive belief in the non-existence <laughs> of gods, but rather a lack of belief in their existence due to insufficient evidence. So <laughs> it is very much not necessarily parroting beliefs, but it's informed by its environment. Yeah. And why that's important is we are all subjects to that. And so yeah. if you're in a position where you may harbor a particular point of view, you can inform it and hopefully have options <clears throat> to go to a higher standard of points of view. John Richard, sorry, what's up? Yeah, well, so here, can we confound this echo chamber? I mean, supposing you ask it, you say to it, uh, I'm I'm an atheist, but I'm thinking about getting God. Well, how would it respond to that it, next time you ask it? Is God real? It's going to have a co conflict, isn't it? Right. How can it satisfy you if you're on you're on a mission to move yourself? Let's right. try that. Right. Yes. And there's also some how do I put it waffling that occurs both in yeah. person and when you have these conversations with AI where you say, hey, does a God exist or something like that? And they'll say, well, you know, and this is actually verbatim. Ultimately, the question of existence of a God or gods is a matter of personal belief and conviction. And what is considered sufficient evidence is a matter of individual perspective. Wow, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Doesn't answer the question. It just says people can believe things. And you know what? Even as an atheist, I also agree that people have the right to believe things too. I wouldn't take that away from anybody, but you also have the right to not believe things as well. But even if, go ahead, Guja, what do you think? Well, there's a beautiful sports analogy here uh, sure. about moving the goalpost, because that's mm -hmm. what it sounds like is happening here. Is, exactly. Is, you can it's trying to answer the question by changing definitions and changing oh, parameters right. yeah it's, it, it's silliness it's sort of like uh did you clean your room i think homelessness is a very important topic to discuss at least i have a room you want, and if you don't have to talk about that right now i'm just gonna have to continue to invest in charity it's like why are you why are you shifting the tones of the conversation yeah. so uh -huh. you know if every single person in the world believes in a god in the same exact God, in the exact same monolithic God, and 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 could answer every question and demonstrate that fully, that God is no more potentially uh, real than and than not. It's it's the sort of thing where it's not true by popular opinion. There's a higher standard of evidence that I'm using to determine if things are true or not, and it's not based on the number of people who share the same opinion. And and that is for as something as extraordinary of a God something that I would highly encourage other people to maintain as their standard of evidence as well, because it shouldn't be by popular vote on whether or not a God exists. It needs to be on a different criteria. John yeah. Richards, what do you think? We don't want the Vox Populis fallacy. That's what we mm. don't want. But this isn't you, you know, because uh, take the question, is atheism true or, mm. or a similar sort of question? Or what does atheism mean? You know, right. go to a dictionary and look up the definition of atheism. And if you go to an American dictionary. Oh, no. Don't make yeah, yeah. Because okay. you, you get, you know, there's several definitions, several different meanings. I mean, you might get three different meanings for atheism. Right. And in an American dictionary, the top one is. The oh, one no. Theists would want it to be. Right, right. Because it was written by theists. What else? Oh, yes, Guja, yeah. what do you think? Well, th this a really good point gets back to what you just said, mm -hmm. uh, Ty, is that unlike truth, which isn't based on popular opinion, um, lexicographers don't write the dictionary. People do. Dictionaries right. are written based on usage. 
Exactly. So the popular mm-hmm. opinion of something right. is what gets put into the dictionary. Correct. So the dictionary is not our source to go for truth. Right. It's a place right. to go for usage. Exactly. Yes. It's just how are people using this word? It does not yes. necessarily mean, is this an accurate representation of what this word means to people? Yeah. So right. when you talk to people who say, I know what atheism is, even I found it in the dictionary, it's like, hey, listen, I'm talking to you right now as an atheist. Like yeah. if I were to yeah. say, uh, and I, and this is weird to my point, but if I were to look up white guy in the dictionary, it doesn't make me understand their experience any more than if I had a conversation with a white guy. So like, I'm having a conversation with an atheist, ask me questions. I'll happily explain to you. And we don't yeah, yeah. We put this book down and we can have a more meaningful conversation between the two of us. Um, yeah. They would John, rather believe the definition that their preacher gives them. True. For our radio listeners, I am a black guy. <laughs> so <laughs> hey, he can John, say that. He's a black yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. John Richards is like, what's this guy yes. that was like, what's going on? John Richards, did you have more to add? For our radio listeners, I'm a pink guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to throw out too, like the idea of yeah, yeah. asking from a Christian perspective, even is atheism true? Is sort of like asking, is Christianity purple? It sort of <laughs> really underscores the the misunderstanding of what the atheist position even is when you think of it as a statement that could be answered as true or false, because it's simply a state of the null state of not being convinced that something's true, right? It's not the declarative statement that atheists would lo- or Christians would love to have that no God actually exists, because that is a statement that requires a burden of evidence. And even I, as an atheist, wouldn't go... I would have as many questions as a person who's declaratively stating that there is no God. And I have had unrecorded calls with even Aaron Ra, with Boudreaux and I going up to uh, the the Ark Museum. And we had a conversation with him. And Aaron Ra is very much, let me tell you exactly why God doesn't exist. And I had just a spirited conversation with him as I did with pastors who did believe that God exists. Though what we shared in commonality between Aaron Ra and I is that we did not believe in gods, but I would not also say that I had knowledge that no God exists. Therefore, atheism is not necessarily the claim that God does not exist. It is a lack thereof. And and if it makes it any more clear, it just means that I don't believe theists when they say God exists for a number of reasons, but mostly because they've none have met my standard of evidence, which is consistent and simple. And it's simply extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And I brought this up to chat GPT and I said, hey, my standard of evidence is simply extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence and gods are extraordinary. Yet the proofs provided for them are anecdotal or based on subjective experiences. Is this logic justified and rational? And chat GPT says your standard of evidence, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, is also a common and reasonable approach, especially in the realm of scientific (laughs) inquiry. And it's important to remember that beliefs and convictions can change based on new evidence and experiences. However, the Christian version of the, uh, oh, are we getting close to Larry? Yeah. Are we getting close? Uh, right? Twenty eight minutes. That's yeah, that's pretty close. So we should probably take a break. Okay. Come back okay. To okay. Topic. We'll come back after this cliffhanger on what the <laughs> Christian version of ChatGPT said to this answer. Right. Go ahead. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio one hundred three point nine LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Mm. Okay. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter 5, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's just take a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. They were founded in 2002. We're in our 21st year, and we have over 1,000 members. We also have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables. Or if it's pretty outside, we'll be out on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom meetup. If you'd like to join us there from anywhere, really, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. You can find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or just go to our website at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start, Start one. one. Right. One bet. Where do you want to pick up? What? Oh, go on, John Richards. Well, I want to pick up where you left off, Ty. Cool. Sure. Because you were saying about 
your standards of evidence, weren't you? Yes, I was talking about my standard of evidence. What is, what's yeah. your standard of evidence, John? We're just a little to hear that from well, you. Well, let, one. I'll, I'll get into that, but let me just put this point to you, which is that recently, William Lane Craig himself admitted that people who believe in his God do so because they've lowered the bar of their evidence. Did you pick up on that yeah. item of news? Yeah. I loved it. If you have a low standard of evidence, you'll believe anything. And, mm. and that's the scary thing about it. And, and coming from coming from WLC, the authority, true. you know. And the, the sad thing is you can if you had a really high standard of evidence, there might be some things that are true that you just may not be willing to confirm that you know, but you won't you will you will always benefit from improving your standard of evidence. And rather than dropping it so low that the things that make you comfortable become true. Hmm. Um, and when you when you admit that you don't know something, that's not a bad thing. Like when right. I raise my standard of evidence to the point where the things that I think I know, I actually don't. That doesn't mean that they're wrong. It just means that I need to do the work to, to understand them better, which gives me an opportunity to learn more about this wonderful universe that we're a part of. And I find that to be an exceptional opportunity as a human being in this time period to say, yeah. there are things I don't understand. I want to know about them. I don't know. It's not a uh, destination. It's a opportunity. And so, you know, take it and take it and learn from it. Uh, it's it's the opposite to the theistic mindset because true. they don't want to admit that they don't know anything because right. that's a sort of weakness. Because they are the holder of thinking. Right. right. And, mm -hmm. and so that, that makes them dogmatic and, and claiming to have certainty about their beliefs. Correct. I'm afraid not. You don't Correct. have any... No certainty. Sorry. And and that leads directly into what ChatGPT said when a Christian asked it what its standard of evidences were. And essentially what the Christian did was, um, well, I, I said, hey, my standard of evidence is extraordinary claims. Simply put, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Mundane claims, <laughs> mundane evidence. It's basically I always raise my need for evidence based on the extraordinary aspect of the claim. If someone says they have a cat, that's a mundane claim. I'll believe it if they yeah. show me a picture. Yeah. If someone says they went to Jupiter and they show me a picture of them on Jupiter, I won't believe them because that's more extraordinary. You need better evidence than that to yeah. convince me that that's true. That's it. I'm raising it the, the bar based on the standard of the claim and how ex extraordinary it is. Um, so it's, it's a method that I'm using to figure out true things from false things. Whereas the Christianity point of view uh, by the representative here was asking, well, do you believe in an objective truth? i.e., do you believe that uh, truth is a matter of personal belief and interpretation? And ChatGPT says, essentially, it's a long answer, but it basically says, uh, no, there has to be an objective truth. And then, of course, the Christian follows up as, well, then who is the arbiter of that, per that objective yeah. truth? And so it's that whole, you know, spiel of an yeah. argument, but it's yeah. cruxed on <laughs> one dynamic in that objective truth does not change and obviously is always true. And and did ChatGPT support that? And of course, it said yes because it's being, you know, fed these questions in a in an appealing manner. But I have mm -hmm. this problem with objective truth and whether or not it can change or not. Uh, Larry Rose, I'm hearing you grown a, grown a couple of times. What do you think on the idea of can objective well, truth? Well, does change? anybody catch a, how he slewed the the question so that it would give an answer that he wanted? Right. When right. he asked who instead of how do we oh, come yeah. to objective truth, he oh, asked yeah. for a who. Right, uh, which of course he wants an answer that will will fit with the God concept. Yeah, um, that's about all I had to say. Oh, that's what I was groaning. <laughs> Bujo, do you believe in an objective truth? Yeah. Okay. Do you believe that objective truth can change? I, I mean, the only way I could see it really changing is if our understanding of something fundamental that's baked into the the definition hmm. uh changes but otherwise no i don't i don't think it could change larry, oh larry and john Richards. Yes. <laughs> go ahead larry, go ahead go john go i'll, go I'll come back and say okay okay thank you well uh, for a start i don't believe that perfect objectivity is possible okay because well every, every proposition has to go through a brain Mm. And on the way through, it mm. gets tainted by all of the experiences well, and biases of that brain. Mm. So those every, 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 yes, indeed. Every utterance, I think, is to an extent. Well, to an extent that's, that's where I was. That's where I was going to go. 
yeah, um, sorry. objective truth, uh, I would think would have to be limited to like uh, objective things, uh, objects, sure. like uh, st facts about the universe, facts about chemistry or, or uh, mm -hmm. not, in other words, not opinions. Matters uh, of is, objectivity. Is there, is there an objective truth about whether this particular comedian is funny? Right. You know, no, mm -hmm. it, right. it's subjective. But as yeah. far as reality, what yeah. we live in, what's mm -hmm. testable and repeatable, yeah, science will take us to an objective truth. Right. Uh, I don't think there are many other uh, paths to that. Well, I, I sort of agree part of the way with that, because, you know, I'm a retired science teacher, so uh -huh. I, believe, I believe that scientific method uh, can okay, uh, come up with some hope, highly hope probable <laughs> correct answers. But the trouble is, for something to be absolutely true, mm. surely it must be eternally true. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, you were, hey, you were you the guy having this chat with GGPT? Did I get your chat records? Because that's no. exactly the question they said. If you have something yeah. that never changes and is objectively true, it therefore must be eternally true. What is it then? And Chappie TC is like, it's God. It's like, yes, yeah, that's right. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that is not, that is not a, a property of objective truth. I mean, like anything, let's say the atoms are objectively true. Okay. And well, at the end of the universe, you know, when the universe is dying and all the atoms break down, there will be no atoms theoretically according to the scientific and, formulas. Wasn't the and there was, so that's it's an objective truth that atoms exist but it's not a, an internal truth no well the trouble and, with and we also only have this time frame this universal yeah. time frame there may be multi-universes yes, which yes, different, have different time frames so and then what's you here true here may not be true there and then you can restrict it to our lifetimes too oh, so right. this is the problem with absolute truth if it's not objective, if it's not eternal, hmm. how long is good enough for a proposition? <laughs> so, and who does the judging? Who says it's got to be a hundred years of no change, or is it ten minutes? Who knows? So, he, I've got a good answer for it. My oh, lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> After my lifetime, I don't care. Yes, yes. So I do get where that makes it Bruce purely is. subjective, then, doesn't it? Yeah. you. <laughs> Guys, I get where Bujo is coming from, where the idea is, wouldn't it be nice to have this objective truth that never changes? Because that's a salient value of, of something that you could be reliable on, right? Something that's true and never changes and is accurate. That's fantastic. I think, though, that we have this weird association between not changing and true, where we deal with things that change all the time and still are true. For example, it's right now 946 where I'm at. If I wait long enough, it's going to objectively tr be true that it's 947 in my time zone. And then if I wait longer, it might even be 10 o'clock. All these times change constantly. And I'm fine with that because whenever I look at my clock, I know I'm you know pointing to something that I could be highly probabilistically accurately true. Uh, I'm I'm objectively true that it is that time, despite the fact that time's always changing. You told well, you brought up an example, Larry. Almost done. You brought up an example, Larry, real quick of like two comedians. You can say, "Hey, I can't tell you which one is funnier because that's sort of a subjective skill." But I can objectively tell you which one's taller. But if one has a grouse spurt, you know, say they're both kids, then that might change in a period of time. So there's not necessarily a a, a necessary connection between changing and true. But it looks good when you try to apply those values to God, because you want a God that is consistent, never changing and objective, because it gives it more seeming authority. Like if it could do a thousand right. pushups too, you'd be like, wouldn't you want a truth that can do a thousand pushups? Like it's just more things that we keep adding to uh, this character. What John Richards, yeah. sorry. Well, you've got a problem even with your time example, because pointing at your watch and saying it's 947, it's 1547 here, is there are no static instants. Time is continuously changing. So right. by, the time, by the time you've said it's 947, it isn't. <laughs> so you're well, always- 947 for a whole minute. <laughs> yeah, it's 947 for a whole minute, John Richards. Well, yeah, that, we can, in we British can time, that isn't an instant though. There are no static instants. We're but always, I'm, only, I'm only defining it to the minute. Okay. Yeah. Well, so who <laughs> specified that minute? Is is I did when God? I said it's nine forty seven. You must be God. If you sure, why not? God. Or I could just be a guy with a watch. Like the whole thing is like I can make a clear enough variable that does change on intervals, 
And it's still objectively true that it is those things. That's the great thing about it. It's like how all programming works. You define a yeah. state and you leave variables change constant or uh, variables for you because that's how variables are. But you have your constants that stay the same and you output data that is still rational and can uh, compile well despite the fact that you have variables inside it that change all the time. Reality is no different. And so the fact that you need to have this character that is accurate always and never changing always and is eternal always, it points to the idea that you need a transcendental God, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the case that truth and changing or eternal are all the same thing or need to be. Abuja, what do you think? Yeah, I feel like we leave, we left out maybe a, an assumption we were kind of using or at least I was operating under, and it sounds like maybe you are too, Ty. There, we can add kind of a practicality to this definition too. Like this is objectively true within the parameters that you know we're not going to go to the nearest millisecond, right? Right, right. I mean, it's 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 for practical purposes, it is objectively true that it, it's this time. If that's the time you need to get up in the morning, correct? Then you can objectively set your clock to that, and that that is that is true for that moment. And right, and I think, yeah. That's an important thing to be able to do. And it doesn't it's have so, to be perfect. It's and it's useful. also a thing I say when I make a lot of Christians angry, when I say objective truth is not that important. Like it's kind of overrated because I mean like yeah. this atheist doesn't even care about objective truth. It's because nominal truth is just as good in a lot of instances. When I say well, I wake up at eight mm, o'clock mm, and I set my alarm well, up at eight o'clock. Yeah, maybe I don't get the millisecond right, but I get up at eight. I guess I show up to work at time. What's up, Larry? <clears throat> Well, they don't believe in objective truth either, at least looking into it or finding out if it's objective. Because, I mean, the belief in a soul, is that an objective truth? We don't know, mm. but they claim it is. Mm. It's just, we claim it. There it is. You know, We live forever. That's, they don't care in verifying their objective truths, I guess, so we get that right down to it. They just assert, don't they? Yeah, yeah well, just assert. Mm -hmm. I'm going. I'm going to put my god hat on now because I'm fed up with worshiping Ty, who specified that a minute is the unit that, that is static. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to it's say a, it's a metric unit. You should love that. You guys invented it. <laughs> Actually, it's not, is it? It's um, That's it's base a, six, isn't it? Yes. Well, base sixty. Um, yeah. Base so, six. So I'm going to specify that the time here is the twelfth of February. So get put that in your pipe. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the idea that so what is this strategy that's being used? It's a standard apologetic that is meant to, hey, listen, I can't make you necessarily believe in a God, but I can give you attributes that we would attribute to a God. And when I talk about mm. the truth, and when we decide that it's never changing, always existing, eternal, and always right, and good, isn't that the attributes of a God? And how can if we don't have a way to you know, see that here with our limited mindsets, still always believe in this one big true thing. This one big true thing is actually the God that I'm talking about. And if we can all point to it, then it's demonstration that that God actually exists. It's the apologetic that leads to it. And while I am aware of the, the, the faults with that, it's a very attractive argument for people that have very low standards of evidence. Because even if you go down that entire path, you're never... You would never follow down that path of pointing to a different God. Because if I follow down, right. I've done this on video. I follow down the apologetic path with a Christian and then I say, praise Allah. <laughs> At the end, they're like, no, 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 no. Hold on, right. hold on. Let's take a couple of steps back. The reason, okay. So if they don't follow it, they only follow that path when it points to their own specific God belief. Well, even if it doesn't, they'll just jump to it. That's right. the problem. Uh, all these deistic arguments, you know, where did the universe come from? Where did we come from? Where did uh, anything come from? Mm. Uh, even time, you know, they'll say it had to be God. Well, they don't make the case that it's actually their God. How how, how come it's not uh, Zeus yeah. or Thor or something like that? You know, it's sure. just it's a logical leap that they never fill in. Well, we've just explained why there's so many denominations. It's because everybody wants their own God. Right. Who agrees yeah. with them. Everybody has their own God. Yes. Even if they belong to the same church, their version in their mind, in their mind yeah. mental version is a different version. But I'd like to bring up one more salient point, which is what's very popular is if I can't get you to believe in a God today and <clears> you're a known atheist, well, I'll wait, you know, 30 years or whatever. And then if I get you to tr to, to switch sides and come onto the Jesus train with me, that's a huge deal because then you're the popular former atheist who now suddenly is transcended 
into uh, Christianity. John, I know you have a lot of Christian friends who've tried to do the same with you. Boudreaux, we've had conversations with Christians even together where like, you can see that there was a, a deep wanting to have that connection with you. Larry, I'm sure you've had conversations like that in the past. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. A lot of people on the show would be valuable recruits for the path of Christianity in terms of marketing and, and recruitment for more Christians to see, oh, this atheist who was very confident is suddenly yeah. now on our site. But the thing is, even if I were convinced that a God exists, and if, even if it was a very specific interpretation of Jesus and, and Christianity, say the Super Bowl, I see it, and I'm like, yes, I needed to see this. This $100 million was well spent. Um, it doesn't make the God anymore real, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if I'm convinced that a God exists, I'm still in the quandary of not having established evidence to demonstrate that that God exists. My my being my ability to be convinced of things is not an indication of something being true or not that's the unfortunate reality of the universe it just oh. means that i can be convinced that things are true and so when i look at christians who are convinced that things are true i don't fault them for it it just simply means like what is the mechanics that they're using to become convinced and can oh. i help them out to figure out where their missteps are and if not that doesn't necessarily mean that i'm wrong by default or they're wrong by default it just means like we live in a world where you can be convinced based on evidence if it if it, you have a very low standard of evidence or if your evidence is, standard of evidence is faulty. So that's why I always encourage people to be skeptical and and critique and try to be as critical minded as they can about everything, even the things they are confident about, because that keeps them from getting into a position where they could fall into these mm. loopholes. John, so Richard, I what do you think? Well, I was going to speculate about whether this advert in the middle of the Super Bowl is going to mm. be successful, because it could backfire, couldn't it? I mean, we're, we're exposing the fact that the very fact that they need to spend it, that amount of money on this promotion mm. puts in doubt the solidity of their, their position, their claim. With a hundred million dollars, they could have put little crosses on the backs of like the NFL helmets or something like that. They could have just yes. had like advertising space on the logos, yes. right? Well, I, I was thinking about the alternative because there was a, a campaign some years ago, and I think it was about 2013 or maybe earlier, to advertise on the sides of buses. You know, we've got double-decker sure. buses. Sure. And, and the, the message was put on, I think we, about £100,000 was raised to plaster these messages all over the London buses. And the message said something about, there probably is no God, enjoy your life. Yeah. Right. I and remember I, that. Darkness, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah, and uh, it, it was sponsored by some fairly rich uh, pes uh, atheist guy. I think he's the same guy that um, has been payrolling uh, Richard Dawkins. And the, the person who came up with this idea was a journalist who was working for, I think, the Times, back at the time, a lady called Ariane Shireen. And I entertained her. She's been here and stayed with us because I, I provided her with some gigs, as it were, at local uh, sceptical clubs. Mm. I, I just like to throw that into the mix, because we don't have the $100 <laughs> million. Dollars, but we have tried to advertise our point of view in a smaller way. Good point. Good point. Uh, speaking of advertisement, do you know the uh, Ron... Uh, Oh, the the guy who said that he he was an atheist and he, they advertised on the Super Bowl uh, several years ago. Sure. Um, oh, he was the son of a president, Reagan, Reagan, Ron Reagan's son. Hmm. Uh, well, he's now advertising on Colbert. Between, uh, I mean, that that advertisement is now showing on Colbert. So, oh, okay, a little bit of spread in the word for oh, ourselves well, there. For $50 million, you could have just bought a plane, have a bunch of flyers, and then drop leaflets on the Super Bowl audience, right? Mm. That would have been mm. enough viral <laughs> attention. It'd be like, what's all this? Well, that would have been a hundred or 200,000, but with an advertisement, they reach tens of millions of people, and they yeah. never do. I'm talking about the viral. I'm talking about the gorilla market, <laughs> Larry. Oh, you well, got to get okay. with the times. Uh, cool. but we, got a, we have a person who's specifically asking Boudreaux a question now. Uh, Boudreaux. Is this is a response from Half Decent Strange? We'll use this to hopefully lead us to the end of the show. Uh, Boudreaux, I'm an atheist. My friend is a closet atheist who goes to religious school. We're both a bit confused about the whole God's plan thing, and I know you love free will. Basically, if God has planned everything, why does He punish people by sending them to hell when they aren't in control of their actions? 
<laughs> I have a fan. Do I have a fan? <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I think I think my whole point is that that would be ridiculous. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't think we have free will. So, therefore, I don't think anyone should be punished for your actions in in the afterlife. Certainly, mm, mm. Um, if that's what we're talking about. I mean, obviously, if someone murders someone, lock them up so they don't do it again. Right. But you know, don't tease them about it. Don't torture them because they didn't. You know, it wasn't right. really mm -hmm. right. So, so, so if if uh, if I'm getting the question right, why uh, these are both atheists? Um, yes, I, I, it seems like they may be confused on the detail, unless I'm missing something. But no, don't punish anyone for doing something they don't have free will to do, and that's kind of a good evidence that there is likely no afterlife. There's a, there's a really good question nestled in here, and it's whether or not you're accountable for being an atheist by your own decisions. And so, John, I'm going to throw this out at you. Is atheism your fault? <laughs> is your atheism your fault? Well, uh, wrapped up, this is a, a begging the question type of question, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is your, your position... I'm not, I'm hopefully not color coding it too much, but I'm just wondering like, is atheism your fault? Are you responsible for it? Wrapped up in that question is the assumption <laughs> that atheism is an ideology. And really, I, I would prefer to call it atheism. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, so uh, yeah. If, if, can I, can I re revisit yeah. it, Ty? Yeah, go for I think, it. Yeah, I think go I for maybe, it. maybe better understand. The question. So are we asked, okay, um, you're an atheist. You don't believe in God. I don't have free will. There actually is a God. Should I go to hell? Because right. if okay. my, my thinking is correct. And, and I mean, I think a, a rational God wouldn't, wouldn't burn someone for not believing in them, even though he didn't give us enough evidence. But right. I think the, the whole, the whole thing seems preposterous, which is why I probably just reject it all. But yeah, I would, I, but I think in my understanding, most religious people believe that their soul has free will. So that most religious people believe, right? Don't they? I mean, man, there's two. Well, yeah, they oh, you to. triggered Larry. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just say they have to believe that they have a choice and that yeah. they, they choose to follow the, you know, the God and the religion and stuff so that they can get their reward at the end yeah, um, right. or just become a better person. Of course, mm. a lot of Christians are, are believing in Christianity because they think it's the moral choice. We can, we can show that it isn't necessarily, um, but they they depend on the fact that they have to have free will. And matter of fact, they, they have argued with me many times about the object, and they always take, I mean, about the subject, and they always take this, the status, the state that, yes, there's free will. We have to have free will. And you have chosen not to follow God. Mm. And so you're, you, just, you have sent yourself to hell, right. which is the argument that I've heard many, many times. Well, the weirdest I, thing in the world is I, I have think a Oh, go ahead, John. I think Boudreaux's just given us next week's topic, hasn't he? Yeah, maybe. Do, do souls have free will? Oh, my gosh. And <laughs> and do they have a Jet GPT account? How about that? Uh, there's, a, there's a sort of double negative in there, isn't there? It, it, mm. it assumes that there are souls, and it assumes that free will exists. But yeah. uh, I see that we need those. So can I do a plug? Yeah, go on ahead, John. Uh, John go and plug yourself. Yeah, first of all, I want to <laughs> encourage people to send news items to me. Thank, thank you, whoever that guy was who let me know about the Bangladesh uh, item. Creepy, creepy Toe 2680. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Creepy Toe. The yeah. names are always weird. We, we, we'd like uh, more news items for, for my Global Atheist News Show. Yes, mm. please. And there's the plug. I, I weekly do Global Atheist News. I do Free Thought Hour. I do three-minute clip type items little homilies mm. and i've the recent ones have covered pretty much what we've been talking about now the, the definition of atheism and several of the other aspects has come up in this chat nice and friends of the discord please subscribe to free thought or say your channel again john richards free thought production free thought channel free thought channel and do you have a separate channel for views on the news or is it strictly that one no, no, it's, they're all on free thought channel you're also making shorts too you're making like i'm getting like little notifications every random yes. time where it's like yes. that so yes. you you're going full media marketing on this i love it yeah well I, i'm you know I, 
I'm my own boss. I can do that. <laughs> Boudreaux, I'm, 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 I'm posting every day. Okay. Boudreaux, anything you recommend we check out before next week? Um, no, but how about a funny little uh, uh, thing about Go time? For Go for uh, it. A quick one. <clears throat> so I, when I was working at Little Caesars, I had to punch a time clock. Um, and uh, I didn't realize this at the time, but the, to- the time they used was a little different than what we were talking about, a base six system, where it was actually metric. Uh, the minutes were zero to a hundred or zero to 99. So I would punch in, you know, just a little bit after six o'clock and it would be at six Oh five or six Oh eight. Or, and I was like, what? I, th- I didn't think I was that late. Turns out it was, it was eight hundredths, uh, of an hour. Right. Um, and that, the whole point of it was so that the, the, the manager could do the math a lot easier when they wanted to calculate how long someone worked. They punched it at this time. They punched it at that time. They can subtract them since it was metric. They can do the math on man hours and all that. But wow. I thought it was a funny little yeah, tie into what we're talking about. <laughs> Pizza Hut, what are you doing? Come on. Let's, <laughs> let the robots do that for you. We have AI now. Hopefully that's been fixed. Uh, you can find my stuff on Let's Chat on YouTube and continue to keep watching. Love you guys. See you next week. Larry? Well, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for, for our radio show archives, Atheist Songs, and many articles on the subject. You can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week at 7 o'clock on Wednesday on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Cheerio. Bye. Cheerio. <laughs> I've got a-